Welcome to Shift Gold Friday Gold Wrap, your overview of this week's precious metals news. It's Friday, September 8th. I'm your host, Mike Meharry. Thanks for tuning in. Well, gold broke through another technical level this week and hit its highest price in more than a year. Currently, the yellow metal is trading at just over 1351. Silver is at 1822, and the gold-silver ratio stands at 7433. The last time gold was at this level was in August 2016. The yellow metal was up 2% on the week and is set for its third consecutive weekly gain. There are a number of factors that continue to drive the price of gold higher, safe haven buying being the most obvious. Economists are concerned about the impacts of Hurricanes Irma and Harvey on the U.S. economy, and tensions between the U.S. and North Korea remain high. But as Peter Schiff pointed out in an interview on RT's Boom Bust this week, gold's rise isn't all about safe haven, at least not yet. Here's what Peter had to say, referencing the day after North Korea launched a missile over Japan. He said gold was going up regardless of the political tension in North Korea, which seemed to last just one day. In fact, gold was up that evening, but it actually finished down the following morning. So gold has been rising, but it's not because of a safe haven. You know, if people are really concerned, if there were geopolitical fears out there, the stock markets would be falling. But they're not. The stock markets are rising. So people are not buying gold because they need a safe haven, at least not from a geopolitical event. I think they're buying gold to get out of the U.S. dollar. Indeed, the dollar index was down 0.5% at 91.177 against a basket of six major currencies on Friday. This follows on the heels of August, which was another down month for the greenback. After a post-election surge, the dollar has tanked, dropping six months in a row. It's currently on pace for its worst year since 1985. Peter said the real key to all of this is Federal Reserve monetary policy. Quote, I think the dollar had a substantial raise based on the expectation that the Fed would be able to normalize interest rates and unwind its massive balance sheet, and the general belief that the Fed's experiment had actually succeeded and that the economy was in better shape as a result. And so the dollar kind of rode that rally, and now I think it's starting to surrender those ill-gotten gains. Some disappointing economic news also helped boost gold, including weaker-than-expected jobs numbers. ANZ analyst Daniel Hines noted that, quote, gold prices rallied as weaker than expected economic data provided some doubt as to the next rate hike by the Federal Reserve. And that brings us back to points Peter was making about the Federal Reserve during his RT interview. Quote, the Fed has shown a propensity to raise rates regardless of the economic data ever since Trump was elected president, so I don't really know what they're going to do. Maybe they'll raise rates again before the end of the year. But regardless, I think they're very close to the end of the cycle. I mean, anybody who's smart now is looking beyond the next rate hike to the next cut, because that's going to be the beginning of the next easing cycle, which I think is going to take rates back to zero, maybe even below zero. It's going to unleash QE4, which I think will be bigger than the first rounds one, two, Two and three combined. In Washington, D.C., Hurricane Harvey provided the political cover necessary to get the debt ceiling raised, at least temporarily. President Trump reached a deal with Democrats, and on Thursday, the Senate approved a package of bills that linked emergency funding for hurricane relief with measures that will raise the debt ceiling and keep the government open for at least three months. The package includes about $22 billion for FEMA disaster relief funds. This comes as no surprise. No matter how much they fret about the debt, both Republicans and Democrats always figure out a way to justify spending more money. Deep down, we know the politicos in D.C. are never going to do anything about the debt. They'll keep kicking the can down the road until they run out of road. U.S. Global Investor CEO Frank Holmes calls debt the mother of all bubbles. And yes, it will eventually burst. Seeking Alpha had some pretty poignant analysis making the case that the debt bubble is good for precious metals. Tim Paul wrote, quote, It is troubling to conceive how we continue to pay on this debt when the value of the dollar is declining. Compounding our debt problem is that the White House is advocating for a large reduction in tax rates with the hope that economic growth will ramp up close to 4%. I believe that tax cuts are needed, but the implementation will lead to larger deficits and more borrowing and debt in the short to medium term. 
As Paul points out, central bank policies have distorted capital markets by manipulating economic conditions through the purchase and creation of huge amounts of dollar debt, while simultaneously holding interest rates very low. Quote, in March, I predicted that we might see further dollar weakness due to the policies of economic distortion. At that date, gold was priced at $1,200 per ounce. So we've seen a 12% rise in the price. Gold is money and tends to increase in value as people see that paper currencies are being devalued. Unquote. The bottom line is it appears things are in place to sustain a bull run in precious metals. The U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission has filed a civil lawsuit against California-based gold dealer Monex Deposit Company in what officials call one of the largest precious metal fraud cases in the history of the commission. The allegations revolve around leveraged trading in gold, silver, platinum, and palladium through the company's Atlas program. Leverage trading simply means that the investor borrows money in order to invest in precious metals. If the investment pans out, the metal will increase in value enough to repay the loan, cover commissions and interest, and generate a positive return. The CGTC alleges 12,000 trading accounts were used to place leveraged precious metals trades, resulting in more than $290 million in customer losses between July 16, 2011 and March 31, 2017. The complaint alleges that Monex brokers used high-pressure sales tactics, downplayed the risks associated with leveraged transactions, and falsely promised customers that Monex would act as the customer's fiduciary and would always act in their best interest. The CFTC also alleges the transactions were illegal because they were not executed on a regulated exchange and weren't subject to certain rules as required by the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act of 2010. It's important to remember innocent until proven guilty. Gold prices fell during most of the time period covered by the CFTC investigation, so it's not surprising people lost money during this time. Leverage is inherently riskiest during periods of falling prices. Monex customers certainly made money on leveraged accounts in the years of rising precious metal prices prior to the time covered by the investigation and actually would have gotten better returns than if they had not used leverage. It's easy to run afoul of obtuse federal regulations. It remains unclear if Monex technically did anything wrong. A bigger concern are the charges of fraud and high-pressure sales tactics. Still, it's important to remember that government agencies often overstate and grandstand to increase publicity for their cases. We don't know for certain how much of the loss customers suffered can be attributed to the fact that they took a gamble and lost, or how much stems from Monex sales tactics. The key question is whether or not customers had all of the information they needed to adequately assess the risk and make an informed decision. Buying gold and silver historically provides investors with a safe, long-term store of value. Leverage and high commissions can turn it into a highly speculative investment with a high level of risk. Leverage trading is not necessarily a bad thing for the savvy investor, but customers should understand the risks. If a dealer does not adequately explain the product to its customers, reveal how much risk they're assuming, and disclose the full cost, you should be wary of doing business with that company. In other precious metals news, Western Australia increased gold royalty payments the state levies on gold miners by 1.25%, a move that could depress gold output in the world's second largest gold producing country. One prominent analyst announced he sees trouble on the horizon for cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin in the form of government crackdowns. As if on cue, the People's Bank of China announced this week initial coin offerings, ICOs, are now illegal and ordered the halt of all related fundraising activity. And gold-backed ETF holdings surged in August, signaling strong demand for gold. Well, that's a gold wrap for this week. You can get more details on all of these stories and more and keep up with the latest precious metals news and analysis throughout the week at shiftgold.com news. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next week.